Well, good morning everybody and welcome to the channel. It's a lovely temperature this morning. Very slight little breeze, a little bit of a chill in the air, but sun shining, very lovely. So I'm the first one here, not by much. I think I can hear, there's the other guys there. But um, yeah, we're gonna get these blown down. Uh, looks like they might've filled it up, uh, filled them up last night. And um, yeah, we'll get them, get them back out there harvesting the canola. So it's been going pretty good. It's probably yielding about half of what a, a, a good crop would, but it is an exceptional crop considering, um, yeah, just the lack of rain we've had this season. So super, super thankful. But um, yeah, haven't had any issues really. Um, just a little bit of wrap around the um, smart augers, but that's to be expected. Um, but yeah, it's, it's going pretty well, it seems. So we'll get these all blown down, check out, check them out, and um, get back into it. The big, the big warriors ready for their day. Morning, everyone. Some, yeah. How many? How many, uh, how many hectares yesterday? Uh, about 110. 110 hectares. Yep. A little bit short of 150. You were hoping for. Yeah. We started, we only got here at 11 o'clock or something. Yeah. So hopefully today we might get 150 with no breakdown. That'd be well, nice. We, we haven't really had any here yet, so it's going pretty good, hasn't it? No, it's been going real well. Yeah. All that, all that, what, three, four weeks of just solid yeah. <laughs> header maintenance has paid off. <laughs> Well, everyone's off. JD's off on the chase again. Brad's just heading off on the, uh, yeah, on header number two. We just had a quick little issue there. Um, the smart auger, because you can move it up and down, in and out, we didn't allow for, when it's all the way in and down, the drum, where the, all the um, product goes through up the feeder house, it moves up and down if you're in a bulky crop. And um, yeah, it just was hitting some retractable fingers, which, wasn't great so um, anyway quick fix it's all good i'm um, just going to be mindful of that now until we can look at it further and we might set the parameters of that system so it can't go down far enough where it can possibly hit so uh but yeah phil's into it he's down further and yeah i'm just i think i'm the standby man i'm just here waiting for something to break down uh, I might jump on the drag bucket here with, with the JX and I might tidy up a couple of spots of the road but other than that um, yeah it's just it's kind of that thing that is needed um, and it's a luxury that we have that a lot of people don't where we can have someone just sort of hanging around
well guys I'm on my lap uh, with the drag bucket um, pretty boring stuff really but I'm over here on the other side so currently they're harvesting over that hill there and this is the organic wheat um, you can see there's a bit um, of a greener tinge over there this is some of the earlier like this was the first stuff that was planted of the organic wheat and then over there there's quite some still green um, but I thought I'd show you here and obviously this is not anything like the wheat we were harvesting uh, on the main farm and yeah the reasons are I mean it's pretty pretty self-explanatory but what basically happens is when with organics the only way you can control the weeds is by cultivating really and when you cultivate you lose moisture so there wasn't as much moisture here and obviously cultivating when we sowed it um, brings up moisture as well so on a year where we're where basically the whole crop needs to rely on subsoil moisture we didn't have a lot here and well there was some down it was just deeper and the problem is is if it's too deep the roots can't get down to that subsoil moisture um, and then you're kind of yeah not it's not really healthy so uh, I think it kind of did but there was enough rain to sort of get the secondary roots going and to really really get it going to get down into that moisture so yeah this is what we end up with um, the positive side is is that the weeds aren't really bad um, in a dry year but yeah obviously this is nothing like what the wheat will yield um, at the main farm um, what do we got there it's filling two across and one two three four five five six ish rows high it's definitely going to be worth harvesting yes yeah, so this could be any anywhere from half a ton to a ton to the hectare maybe um, yeah it's just not really great but who knows parts of it might do more there is actually a bit of a thicker spot just there but right where I'm here it's um yeah it's just it is what it is well it is mid-afternoon and harvesting still going beautiful so I can't complain what I'm gonna do now is we're here at the big shed obviously at, uh, here at the development block and I'm going to assemble some of this pallet racking um, we're probably gonna have three bays just on the edge of the cement here um, and we can stack oil underneath and then we can have parts and different bits and pieces on top of that which can be accessed from either the cement side or the other side um, so that's probably yeah that's the plan at this stage so yeah just Part of the job description at the minute is just hang around, do a few little odd jobs. It'd be great to get this mess cleaned up here. Phil has offered for me to go on the header a few times, um, but yeah, I'm just I'm happy to do whatever. So I don't need to be on a header. Um, I don't need to be on a chase bin. I just whatever needs to be done is is fine. So yeah, I don't want everyone thinking out there that Brad and Phil are just hogging the hogging the fun jobs. Um, but we will see how we go don't mind the wires here I the battery keeps running out of my phone and I need a new phone but I bought a drone instead so you know it's the important things now actually for those interested I might as well show you I don't I don't know if people are interested well it's probably gonna be more interesting than watching me build that but it is a Mavic Air 3 so they've only been out for a couple of months so I worked out I had the Air 2 for about two and a half years. Those that have watched from the start, um, remember I think it was vlog, it was a vlog two or three, I crashed my little drone, which is the Mini. That was just one of the original Mavic Mini. And um, I've still got that, I got it re repaired, but I needed a drone, so we bought the Mavic Air 2, which has been absolutely superb. Um, just really, really good. But now, with this one, um, I really wanted one with the screen in the controller because it's just a pain hooking up the your phone or a, a iPad mini or whatever to it um, every time you want to fly so all I've got to do to get this going is turn that on turn that on and get the little joysticks from the back and screw them in there and within like 30 seconds I can be flying which is really good because sometimes you've only got like two minutes to do a quick drone shot and yeah by the time you set up the moment's gone so yeah i i've been really excited about this actually my wife actually surprised me i didn't know i was going to get one but i will show you this 
So it is a little bit bigger than the Air 2, but what is really cool is it's got the two um, lenses. So you've got your standard wide angle lens down the bottom, which is like a normal drone, um, the same as the Mini, the ones on the Mini. And then you've got a 70mm lens up the top, which is essentially the best way to describe it is it's just a zoomed in version of a wide lens. So it's about three times zoom, essentially, but without losing any quality. So for that, you can get really nice, and you might have already seen in some of the shots, um, I'm just having a bit of fun playing around with, but you can sort of have that zoomed in effect, which means, um, yeah, it just gives you a bit of a different perspective and um, yeah, really, really handy. So uh, it's also a little bit faster, uh, longer battery life. I think it's 46 minute battery life and yeah, just really, really good as far as all of that. So I'm, uh, I'm really happy with it. Uh, this isn't a drone review by the way, I just thought people might be interested to know what I use um, and I am by no means a very good drone pilot, I just enjoy mucking around with them. But anyway, let's get into it. Probably the best way to do this is I will set this up somewhere and do a time lapse. I don't, the forklift isn't working, the radiator's out of that, it's been fixed as we speak and so I'll have to do this all by hand but I will sort of cart one at a time, just the bits I need and start assembling it over here, I think. Yeah, definitely not the easiest way to do it without a forklift, but we got it done anyway, so that should be good. I might go back down and see what's happening with the harvesting, check that everything's all right there, and um, yeah, I might even sneak in some more drone footage. I just, I'm enjoying it. I'm trying not to let harvest get in the road of a good drone, drone flying session, but I've got to be careful, because I run the risk of looking like I'm not being productive, but hopefully you guys enjoy it. guys I've been upgraded to header driver and Phil's just going for a bit of a drive around have a bit of a break as far as just not being on the header um, and yeah we just had some dinner so yeah we're ready for another another night she's um rather thick here I just got to get used to it again um as far as getting all the reel set right and all of that. It's uh, pretty slow going here, it's quite thick, but unfortunately it's, the crop set itself up really well to be a very high yielding crop, but just with the dry uh, finish it just wasn't able to, um, yeah, turn that moisture into to grain. So the yield isn't as good as it looks like it could be but still pretty good I think we've been sitting at about um, 1.5 ish um, ton to the hectare for most of the most of what's been harvested so I think we're just pretty close to 200 hectares harvested so almost one third of the way through the canola which is really good so 
Yes, we've got the sun just setting down there and there's a bit of smoke in the air. There's a few fires burning about um, the state. So there is a bit of a smoky haze. And um, yeah, so we are just gonna keep going here. And uh, yeah, I think unless anything exciting happens, I'll probably have my hands full here. I won't, won't probably take much footage. Um, being at night, these GoPros don't really take great footage at night. It's all shaky and wobbly, so hopefully I will see you in the morning because that means nothing exciting's happened. Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, yeah, we went till about 11.30, I think we knocked off, so we didn't get home until about 12, a little bit after. This morning, got a phone call. Um, the truck driver has done a starter motor. Well, the truck's done a starter motor, so... check which one it is. If dad's heading to town and he will hopefully be able to pick up a starter motor and then come out and drop it off and I can fit it and then we can get back going again but that's the story at the minute um, so hopefully it all all comes together. Well guys we're here at the truck we're currently just waiting for dad he should be here any moment now with another starter motor but I did get the starter motor out and sitting there um, at just a bit of a painful spot really but it's uh, yeah, down in there, so anyway, we got there in the end, worked all right. So we are actually here <laughs> where our canola's going. So this is the, um, the little town we've been sending the canola to. So yeah, three loads of that, so roughly 200 tonne of that is uh, yeah, from the development block. So it is a bit quiet here. Um, there's been two or three trucks go past, but yeah, they've got wheat going in that bunker and the canola going in that bunker and yeah it's just not not very many people are into it at the minute and i don't know how much is in the area either so there is quite a bit of crops that just haven't done much so just whether it's dry or i did hear there was a bit of a frost too uh, a bit of frost damage crop um so yeah that affects the yield as well so I'd, yeah it's just not really sure I think the rough estimates was there's probably going to be three times less grain than um, than last year. So anyway, we're just yeah we're just waiting. So it's been about seven years since I was a auto electrician. So it's been a little while since I was mucking around with all these sort of things. But um, yeah, this one here it looks like the clutch. It feels okay, but yeah, just when it was in the truck, um, it was clicking in and spinning, but not engaging. So it um, yeah the clutch here must be on its way out but yeah we've got another one exactly the same coming and yeah these ones are a lot nicer than the old school ones if anyone's dealt with truck starter motors or tractor starter motors will know that these aluminium housing reduction gear drive ones the 39 mts are a lot easier to put in as opposed to the 40 mts or the 42 mts um, that used to be in the older older ones they're a bit bigger and they're all steel um, or cast body and they were heavy I think they were like 30 kilos so um, yeah they were always pleasant to fit so yeah these are a lot nicer once we get the other one I'll double check that the orientation here is right I might have to move the nose cone around a bit um, and just yeah then we should be able to put it in with a bit of fiddling around I'd say here he is the delivery driver well you made it you did make it You must be looking somewhere else. <laughs> oh, well, bad eyesight. Hey, buddy. <laughs> yeah, I'm not How you going? You going with Pop? <laughs> yeah. This is my little boy, Eddie. Uh, you say hello. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> no, I haven't actually. Right, eh? Permanent. <laughs> I better swap these bits over that I need. And uh, see how we go. So, that looks like I don't have to change anything. I think that's the same orientation. Do you know this fellow, Matt? What's that? You know this fella? Yep, no, this, I introduced him. This is this is my little boy, Eddie. Eddie he's, mate. Eddie's helping Pop today. And what's Pop got in his hand? <laughs> this boy, <laughs> he can just disappear so quick, but not anymore. No, Pop's got that sorted. <laughs> no, a great idea, I say. Right, so this looks like it's ready to pop straight in. 
I just got to swap the that earth bit over that plug that should be good to go ready to pinch my fingers getting it in there right oh we got her all in now to see if she fires up look at that right how to pack up well guys that's all done I'm just heading back out to the development block where the headers are and I don't know what's going to happen so I think they've just started again for the day so um, yeah hopefully we can get a good day in and yeah I think there might be another three days if all's going well three days of canola harvest so that'll be excellent but anyway we might leave the video here for now um, and yeah tune in on the next one and we'll be continuing to harvest I believe we'll catch you in the next